contributes to a better understanding of the needs and of the barriers faced by the women. And it is, again, it's from their own perspective and also that of the experts. So it's interesting sometimes to see the, the contrast um, between um, the opinions of both the women and the, the experts. The experts are what we call the organizations or the agencies involved in helping uh, women in business. So the report is structured into four sections. The first part is um, related to gender and entrepreneurial skills, as well as the overall objectives uh, and research questions. The second part then is um, the research design, um, the research sample, data analysis, et cetera. The third part is the, I suppose, the um, core part, and which is the analysis and assessment of the MOSI survey. So what findings um, came out of this and um, a number of tables, et cetera, were created for as a result. And then the final part then is the conclusions and discussions on the empowerment um, of female social entrepreneurs that has uh, arise, risen from this um, report. So just to outline the, the report and the, the study itself, the survey, over 107 female social entrepreneurs uh, were, into, were surveyed and also, as I said before, expert from organizations. Um, as I say, two surveys, one for the women and one for the what we call the experts. And it was um, the, uh, taken part in seven countries. So Ireland, uh, the UK, Germany, Greece, Italy, Lithuania and Turkey. So some of the main findings, um, about 83% of the participants were in the 25 to 55 age group. What was interesting was that the majority, the vast majority, about 80% had a high level of education. So, um, and again, this is something that is in contrast with what comes out in the literature review. So about 80% of the women that we surveyed had education levels ranging from secondary to undergraduate or equivalent. About 80% of the, those surveyed work in, worked in social enterprises or small to medium sized enterprises or in the private sector and about 78% of them worked in management, marketing, public, uh, public relations, or accounting departments. So again, you can see that high level of education coming through. Um, they usually found their jobs, uh, again, through the social network, um, friends, internet, job applications, advertisements, and uh, networks. And the factors then that motivated participants to work in their current businesses, the majority of which would be social enterprises, was that the, they wanted to make an impact on society, that social impact, whether the social and environmental impact. Also, um, to achieve some kind of work-life balance um, in terms of um, a, a lot of the women um, in the, that were surveyed have uh, caring issues, whether that's uh, parents or children. So they wanted a uh, work-life balance and also tied in with that would be flexible working hours and um, obviously wage and salary were important factors as well. So some of the challenges, and uh, again, um, a lot of these challenges came out in the literature review as well and were backed up in the survey. Um, uh, one of the challenges would be financial. So um, in terms of maybe uh, lit financial literacy, how to develop a business plan, yeah, et cetera. And again, this supports the, the findings of the literature review. And um, social difficulties then as well, maybe low public awareness, social integration, et cetera. Cultural, um, such as market attitudes, beliefs, expectations, um, psychological as well, in self-confidence, um, et cetera. And then some institutional challenges, um, engaging with people that might be difficult or less understanding. Um, also, access to the business sector itself, entry into that sector was a challenge. And then discrimination. Um, so uh, some in the survey um, spoke about discrimination in the labour market. The survey itself then found, um, uh, the main challenges found in the survey were language barriers. So that was the main challenge identified by the women themselves in the survey. Also difficulties in reaching the target group. So the, the target group of the social enterprise or the enterprise they're involved in. Um, oftentimes it might be just limited to the ethnic group that they themselves come from. And so difficulties in reaching a wider audience. 
um, sometimes in a lack of interest, a lack of engagement by the, the wider society in, in their social enterprise. And um, then uh, traditions or attitudes towards female employment and also cultural barriers, um, especially in relation to business life. For the, those um, who are founder, the, there is a section in the survey that was focused specifically on those who manage or founded a uh, social enterprise. And um, their challenges that they identified were um, obviously scarce financial resources. So trying to sustain and keep the social enterprise going financially um, was their biggest challenge. Also insufficient employees, especially skilled employees, and then um, a lack of a, a network or a collaboration, which we will get back to um, at a later point. So um, in terms of contrast between the women and the experts uh, surveys, and they had similar opinions on the challenges faced by um, female so social entrepreneurs. For example, both stated that finding um, basics such as accommodation, uh, communication, understanding the language, finding suitable childcare, etc that they they were some of the major difficulties in, encountered um, on the other hand the participants the women themselves rated the culture of the host country or having financial uh, issues as le less difficult so this was in contradiction to um, the literature review that is um, currently on this topic so in the study we compared women from ethnic minorities working in um, small, medium-sized enterprises, and also female social entrepreneurs working in their own social enterprises. So those who were employed listed financial uh, difficulties as a main cha as a, a challenge. Um, however, the female social entrepreneurs listed um, basics such as finding accommodation, language barriers, um, childcare, et cetera, as more difficult. Um, but nevertheless, financial difficulties are still present in both cohorts. So therefore, we can conclude that a business can only develop and grow when other exogenous factors like the basics, such as accommodation, language and childcare are guaranteed. So that was interesting um, in terms of some of the findings of this study and how maybe um, towards policy direction in the future. In terms of skills then, a number of skills were identified and they could be basically broken down into two parts, social and business. In terms of social, um, again, the women identified intercultural skills uh, as important, communication and especially network building and collaboration. So um, that was interesting that that is coming out strongly again um, in the skills area and was identified as a difficulty in the challenge, a challenge for them. In terms of business skills, um, study and research, that research and development um, when you're starting up a, an enterprise, that was found um, a, a skill that was needed. So um, for example, how to start a, a business, how to develop a business plan, um, how, how the financials work, how to source funding, et cetera. So those types of business skills and problem solving um, were identified as areas that should be, could be strengthened um, for this cohort. So um, the participants felt that business skills such as communication, creativity and innovation, uh, recognition of business opportunities, setting strategic goals and objectives and networking and collaboration, that they were important areas that should be developed. And out of those um, main skill sets we developed in, uh, that were deemed as a gap or a missing, we developed a number of modules and um, centered uh, around that. So um, because we, we uh, developed the modules out of the skills that the women themselves identified as being necessary. And I will talk about those modules at a later point. Um, then again, then another finding was that um, women from ethnic minorities were found to contribute to their region by serving those in need, supporting a local market and helping the integration of vulnerable, vulnerable groups and also through promoting different cultures and foods through social enterprise activities. So therefore, not only are the social enterprise um, empowering women from ethnic minorities, and not only is it important for themselves, but it is also important for their local uh, region. 
in terms of advice that we asked women to maybe give advice or offer advice um, to aspiring uh, women from social from ethnic minorities who want to establish a social enterprise. So the main advice uh, that came through was develop your knowledge, develop your skills. So again, that feeds into the, this suite of modules that we have developed. Uh, follow your dreams, which is, which is a lovely one because that, that came through that um, to follow your passion uh, is important because um, when it's something that you love or you believe in, you're more um, likely to see it to the end. Uh, be confident and trust yourself. And those confidence building skills, those social skills that I spoke of earlier um, are important. Hold on to your purpose and be brave and move forward courageously uh, um, while still adhering to your goals and main objectives. So in summary for the, the report, we um, found that empowering women from ethnic minorities requires both improving their knowledge and skills, but also helping them overcome their fear of failure and other social uh, skills. Um, mentoring women from ethnic minorities with female role models of their own ethnicity can help them become courageous and move forward in their careers. Um, establishing networks for female social entrepreneurs from ethnic minorities can be an important strategy and that Europe itself is not fully exploiting its social entrepreneurial potential as far fewer women than men start up or plan to start social enterprises. So that's the first part of the, the project, the findings of the, uh, of the surveys. So moving on then to the second part, the storytelling library, which again, I think it is probably what makes this project unique because this is where the women themselves are given a voice and um, allowed to, to um, express their own experiences um, in terms of um, establishing a social enterprise in, um, a, a, in a country that, um, that they have moved to. So um, at this stage then I would like to maybe um, start the uh, round table discussion and um, for this, I would like to introduce that we have um, two speakers. Um, we, uh, the Betty, um, our third speaker, um, couldn't make it today as she is ill. So, um, but um, she has sent her apologies and wishes us luck today. Um, so, we have Corrine. Uh, so, I hope Corrine, you're there, and that you, you can hear us. And um, Corrine is the founder of CAD Aid and um, also an author of um, a book called My Version of the Facts. And then as well as that, um, is also um, the founder of the um, website, um, giving up-to-date news on um, events. So um, I think, Corinne, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Yeah. Lovely. Corinne, if you want to just maybe take um, a minute or two maybe to introduce yourself and tell us about your uh, social enterprise and what is involved in your social enterprise. And then I'll introduce Tulawani. Okay, thank you, Mary. I'm really happy to be here today and thank you for everything that Envoise is doing for us as a minority and migrant women. So my name is Karin Mambu. I'm originally from uh, Cameroon. And then I'm the founder of MEMA Group. MEMA Group is four company in one. Mima is my two first name, surname, which is Metif and Mambu. So I'm doing like a, a We Are News, which is exactly what you were saying earlier, the blog online. is specialized of the African news all over the world. Everything that African people are doing, we're just writing there on the blog. We have as well uh, Kate Agency, which is an event company, and uh, Kate Publishing, which is an, um, the uh, publishing to publish the book, the editor of a company. And then the biggest one that I really love, it like is really take all my entire heart is the humanitarian part, Kate Aid. Yeah, Kate Aid because I doing a lot for to empower women. For me, women is everything. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing um, to empower women, girls education, and uh, fight against gender-based violence in general and specialize in the uh, child rape because myself, I'm a rape survivor. So that's me in general. So I'm a proud feminist. Lovely. Thanks, Karina. And thank you for joining us today. And I'll just introduce our next speaker. Sorry, Marie, if, Marie, if I could just interrupt there. If you, 
when if you stop sharing your screen, you'll be able to see the other speakers, and everybody else will see the other speakers then as well. So lovely. Okay, thanks, James. Um. I had a slide up there to Luani about, um, but we can push it up again afterwards, about uh, her genuity Africa. So if you'd like to maybe t tell us, um, just uh, tell us about her genuity Africa and um, how you set it up. So hello everyone, my name is Toluani Akahom and thank you Marie uh, for having us here today and the incredible work that you did with uh, the research, uh, really, really, uh, on point every step of the way and I'm sure you know that yourself so well done and congratulations. Uh, my Thank name you. as I said is Suluwani Akahome and I am a leadership learning and inclusion consultant uh, which is my everyday work. I'm also uh, the founder of Rogit College and Rogit College is um, uh, we call it Africa's first uh, um, online platform dedicated to adult learners uh, so uh, I run that as well. But also, um, I started Her Genuity Africa uh, because um, as a migrant woman uh, from a developing nation, I'd had my own challenges. And um, in 2014, uh, I started really thinking about the, the challenges that uh, women face, women from migrant backgrounds face, and the, the, the triple dimension of disadvantage that actually follows us, which is that of being migrant and of being a migrant woman and of being migrant woman from a developing nation. And all of the challenges and the barriers that attend that. And uh, I, I, we began to realize that there was something that we needed to do about changing the, the narrative for ourselves. Uh, because, as you well said, a lot of uh, people from migrant backgrounds, especially from developing nations, uh, would have um, education, well, there would be human capital, and uh, realized that it wasn't really uh, something that was being maximized here in Ireland. So, and I began to talk to a lot of um, women uh, that were from developing nations, particularly of African descent, and I realized um, the men would have progressed with their education, maybe not have found work, but at least would have gone to school in one way or the other. But some of the women were really stuck. Um, so we began to talk about what exactly did you want to do when you thought about coming to Ireland or when you first arrived in Ireland. And all of those conversations uh, generated um, information that allowed me to see what was possible with Her Genuity Africa. So Her Genuity Africa is a, a, an informal consortium of... Um, social entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, professionals, uh, particularly uh, of African descent. And what we do is pro uh, provide support, provide promotion and mentoring for, for um, those who are interested in entrepreneurship and those who are already entrepreneurs. And we are really focused on um, poverty eradication, particularly in Ireland here, the social economic inclusion of women of African descent, because we realize that Integration is not really possible without social economic inclusion. Uh, and so that was, that was one of the, the, the key points that we wanted to address. So we are, we are, we are centered, our, our goals are centered on the SDGs and uh, we work not just in Ireland here, but we have um, uh, other, other people within the network that are in Ghana, that are in Uganda, South, um, Zimbabwe, uh, South Africa and um, uh, Nigeria. So, and we're growing a network of, of women um, every time. Lovely. And so it's interesting when you're saying about that um, social economic inclusion here in Ireland and that that's mm. part of what is needed for integration. And so in terms of, I suppose, moving uh, to a new country and trying to establish yourself, first of all, establish yourself as an in individual, but then to try and establish maybe a, a, an enterprise or a social enterprise, has its own difficulties. So I was just wondering, uh, Corinne, did you find that when moving to Ireland, what were some of the main difficulties that you encountered when you tried to establish your uh, enterprise here in Ireland? Yeah, the first challenge is just my skin color first is another challenge, like discrimination. You can face the discrimination when you want to move forward. People as well about when what you are doing from where I'm coming from in terms of tradition, when you go through the migrant people, 
this this type this this thing that the patriarchal of those uh, men that they don't want you to approach sometimes their, their wife or their sister or something like that to get them understand that it's very important for the women to be empowered so what can can you do to move forward for what you really want to do because what i'm doing is to autom autom empower the women so automation of the women and you can do a better the automation of the women if you can approach another migrant people who can understand what you, what what you really what is your vision what is your goal what you really want to go with so those this kind of challenges like my skin color first um the culture is true that in ireland we have a similarity between in, in terms of the tradition between ireland and africa because of the catholicism and then, and then there's a taboo as well, like another challenging, because I'm fighting up against rape of the children, but they don't want me to write, to let the child wear, for example, the t-shirt where I wrote, I wrote the rape is a crime. For them, it's not good for the children, it's hard. But for me, it's not hard at all because the children are on like seven or nine, they are raped by the adult. So if it's hard to wear just a t-shirt to say rape is a crime, can we imagine how harder it is for the children to be raped by, by an adult? So this kind of challenges is what I'm facing every day. When you want to do the awareness, to spread the word, to let the migrant people especially, to understand that it's not, it's not the taboo, we have to talk about it. You have to empower yourself. You, want, you have to, 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 to get the girls educated at the same level as a boy. Because what I'm doing is empower girls' education to reduce as well the gender-based violence. For me, I think we have to educate girls and boys in the meantime at the same level at the base. So those challenges is really, is really, really tough. And when you arrive, you do like uh, uh, what I'm doing, rape. Uh, Kate Aid is fighting against rape and sexual abuse. You have a uh, rape crisis center, like it's the biggest uh, organization who is fighting against rape in Ireland. So people doesn't want to give you an opportunity to talk about why to do because they think you are come to do the competition and then you can't beat them. But I'm not here to beat anyone. I'm here to share my own experience. I'm here because as a rape survivor, I do really understand how hard that it is. I really understand the pain that some rape or some victims are feeling inside them. And then I, I used to ask them, when someone is hurt, you just say sorry. You feel the pain, but you can't really feel the pain because you didn't, it's not you who was, who was hurt. So to, to really, really uh, uh, help those victims, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying everyone is supposed to be raped, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying that when someone has been a victim or become a survivor, she is actually the best person to understand the other victims. Because people always judge them without knowing them. People always push them without understand that it takes time for them to leave the, 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 the victim to be, to, to, to let the victim and become a survivor. So when you do the storytelling, you talk about, you say, no, I'm not here to fight anyone. I'm here to share my story. We can join our forces together. They don't understand, they say barriers. And another thing that I'm facing is hard to get the charity number because Kate Aid here in Zorisa, like a, a company. So a company is included that you have to pay in tax, you have to do this, there's a lot of things inside it, but to get the charity number is another issue. It takes time, there's a lot of steps that you have to, to do. And as I say, I even been having hurt by some migrant people because uh, they was, have this feeling that I wanted to take their wife away because I'm pushing them to discover, to come out to their comfort zone. They break my car because I was inviting them in lots of conferences to tell them that no, this skill doesn't mean that you, you're supposed to have a high edu education. No, you have to trust yourself. You have to feel like, what can I really do to empower myself? What are my passions? And from that, you can build something for yourself. You don't have to work for people. You can work for yourself. You can be a self-employment, but you have to really like, uh, like what you do. You, got to, you have to feel exactly what are your passion. And from that, we can manage to give you the gap so that you can go move forward. But the men doesn't want because in German it's like they are the master, they own the lady. When you are get married, you, you know, you are, you are everything. So you have to fight 
all those kind of things to, to break this taboo, to let them understand clearly that no, men and women is a complementarity. It's not a ring. The marriage is like, it's a dialogue. You have to listen to your wife. You have to let, let your wife as well to, to, to move forward to, your, to her dreams because you are moving forward to your dreams as well. Even though she's a mother, she can be a mother and a role model for their own kids, but she has to do something that she's really find herself comfortable and feel. So all those challenges, it's not easy for me every day to know organize conferences. Sometimes they can't come, sometimes they, they will be there. You see, to address the speech and so on, they are not there, but you are doing this for them, most especially, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Corinne. That that's so interesting to to hear that so even um, when you move to Ireland, that those taboos kind of follow you. That that patriarchal society follows, and it's uh, it's still here um, even in a new country, etc. Tulavani, do you find that as well? That it, a lot of the challenges are kind of brought with you as well, and that, that the women that you work with, that they find um, similar as well. That it's difficult to break that. Um, those cultural challenges. Yeah, absolutely. Karine uh, is, is um, right on point with that because, uh, you know, we all come with different paradigms and these cultural paradigms um, shape us. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, I found that working with, in my own um, county here, that um, there's that, that uh, patriarchal um, dimension to things just as um, Karine said that even I as a woman uh, would sometimes have to say to the man uh, would you say to your wife or would you encourage your wife so it, it they are those things and then the fact that the men you know they feel that it is their right to have this and you as a woman should be you know at home money so Indeed, um, people from ethnic minorities, depending on the culture, do go through those kind of um, cultural paradigms. So one of the things that, and you know, for us as opinion leaders, we try to be very, um, very mindful of how we bring, um, we we kind of initiate so that it doesn't become um, destructive and you don't become an enemy when you're trying to uh, bring change. So we very very uh, diplomatic women and even it, I mean this is not part of the conversation but even issues relating to domestic violence is something that you know it's kept hush -hush, um, something that you want to talk about those are things that we we do have to deal with um, it, it, it does seem that we can um, actually engage with the communities but just Karen says uh, and which I don't really like talking about what a lot more because it is discrimination that we a lot of discrimination uh particularly can descend and I suppose we we seek out like a, a, a beautiful flower so we're not uh, so um you know just you're just there you when you um try to access and and you, your research has uh, actually pinpointed that we are trying to access uh, jobs and all of that it is quite difficult i mean i was in a, in a webinar not so long ago and one of the key points we, we highlighted was the fact that i have actually taken women to charity shops and it's because the same in which you engage the community and they integrate very quickly but we take our women to these charity shops and then you know and to say look would you give our women some sort of um, opportunity to to uh, get involved and we find that that in every case women of african descent are kept at the back and you it's just like you're not fit to be in front uh, and so that's what we found uh, and hello to and there's the annual and there and um, so we we if we found that we, we're not actually they're not actually um brought to the fore and so when you quit, they tell you is language barrier and i say but you have women from eastern european countries that have the same language barrier and all of those dimensions are there 
Then, of course, we have the lack of role models, lack of mentors. Uh, just on Sunday, we, I brought together a group of people to, who, have, who have the lived experience of being migrants, but have actually progressed in their own uh, careers here in Ireland to speak to up and coming uh, migrants who are, or have just obtained their residency here. To feel that you're not alone on this journey. We, 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 you know, we wear the t-shirts. And, and so we, we can provide um, uh, um, uh, our own perspective of how, of how we overcame the challenges. So those are very important things that, you know, even our children have to see that we are doing something. And that is very good. When, when the society doesn't allow really access the things you need to access, then it comes a challenge. Years ago, I heard a, 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 a say, I don't want to be a mummy. And uh, we, why don't you want to be a mommy? She's, and she was in direct provision then with her mother. She said, because when I'm to school, all you mothers are sitting down gisting. When I come back from school, you're all sitting down gisting. I don't want to be a mommy. Because our own idea of being a mummy was that you have no job. You're particularly jobless because you're in direct provision. So those are, and that is the wrong um, legacy that we want to leave. So that's part of the challenge. And of course, there is the social capital, access to social networks that builds um, the, the right social capital. So that is also a challenge. And as rightly pointed out in your, in your research, it is that uh, dimension of um, enterprise training and education, you know, but one that is not just a, a one size fits all, but that has a, a, a dimension of catering for the needs of ethnic minorities because the, 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 the needs are different, the challenges are different from, na from the natives and research has pointed that, that out. Even talking about the triple dimension, the triple disadvantage dimension is something that people of Irish descent do not face. Yes, you might face gender discrimination, but not discrimination on, on those dimensions of, of being migrant and of being woman, migrant woman from a developing nation. And, it, and that's when even when I talk about um, ethnic minorities and, and migrants, we won't necessarily talk about people from France or Spanish that we go through, even though they are migrants as well. So those are challenges that we, we, have, to, we have to deal with. So, so we could go on and on, but I think you, you get the, 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 the gist of it really. Thank you. So those are the, the, the yeah. challenges. I love what you said before about um, you said in your interview about the triple disadvantage, you know, being a migrant, being female, being from a developing nation. But what you said in your interview was that you, you're turning that around, you're creating your own narrative now, and that you're actually making that as part of your empowerment, that this is what is making you proud, is the fact that you're a migrant, you're female, and you're from a developing nation. And this is what, you know, the, yeah. the badge that you're wearing, my pride. And I think that's yeah. a... a a wonderful way of turning that, that disadvantage. Absolutely. I mean, we cannot sit down and keep talking about the disadvantage. I mean, I, the, the reason why I went into business in the first place, why I became self-employed was because years ago, I, I mean, I had third, third level coming into Ireland. I, I, and I, when I, and there was no access to information, there was no access to, you know, you know, and this was 2006. So I had, I didn't have that kind of support. And the fact was that I just didn't know what to do. So I, I, I began to really um, search for a job, search for your interviews. I didn't get called for any, but the vote for was interesting. I nailed it, you know, it was interview. And after when I didn't hear anything from, you know, the, 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 the right channels, I contacted the person from Force who linked me up and I said, what did she say? And I tell you till today, you know, this, this pivotal times in your life, those destiny defining times when you know where you are, where, what you were wearing and all of that, even till you die. I remember where I was up to today. Till today. And uh, I remember that, so the lady said she didn't think their clients would like your voice on the phone. And I like, Huh? You know, and I, I remember ringing off and then I said, I'll call back just in case I didn't hear him right. And I did call back right about two minutes later. And he said, Tolu Ali, 
the lady said she didn't, the clients would not like your voice on the phone. She didn't think so. I find you a bit aggressive myself. These are people that I still see till today. And this is 2008. So, in turning that around, I said to myself, look, and I did go back. I asked for a feedback three months later, just to bring closure. And I remember she said, there was something that you didn't have. You know, you said it was a good interview, but it was just something. And so today, please, I, I, I really don't know what that thing is. But that's a story that defines me. That's a story that defines my journey, but doesn't define me and allows me to say, look, if you, if, if, if society says they're not going to or build your own table and invite them and and that's that, that's my philosophy you know i'm not going to wait until you let me in you know i'm just going to find an opportunity and go in and, and and that's what even when i drive that's it you're like who's this crazy african woman oh there's an opportunity i'm going you know, so um, it's the same. It's the same way it works in in life. So if you come to society like like um, we have now, you see this is a disadvantage. How can we potentially make the disadvantages advantage? I'm a woman. It's an advantage. I'm a migrant. It's an advantage. I'm one of the best you can see around. And the third thing, I'm a developing nation. We're working on that. So that's 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 it really. Lovely. That's so, so empowering to hear you, you talk like that. It, it really is fantastic. Um, Karina, just to get back Thank to you, you and talk about, um, say we, we won't focus on challenges now, we want to focus maybe on the skills that are required. So in terms of where can you see oh, um, gaps in terms of knowledge or awareness or other skills that are needed? Um, you know, are the, is there a provision in Ireland to help you develop your social skills, to help you develop your business skills, uh, like we identified there in the survey? Um, or is that available in Ireland for you? Yeah, actually I have worked with uh, C CDLC, is, they, they are in Ennis. So they helped me as well when I was uh, starting to, when I was wanted to register actually uh, Kate 8 So, I have some mentoring uh, training with one of, of of them, so helping me. So I think there is a thing, and then I also do like uh, hand in money. There was a lot of different things that you can do around to maybe empower more yourself. So there is an opportunity, and then those opportunities are, are also I think is not well advertised. So there's a lot of women that they don't they, they are not aware of 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 that, which is a which is another. Um, problem because when you don't know ignorance is is something that actually put many people down because they don't know their skill you don't have to like i was saying you don't have to be high educated you just have to follow your dream you just have to feel what you really want and go to the right people even though you'd go and then they don't open you the door continue to go actually there will be one door for you at the end of the day you know Absolutely. at the base me i'm a journalist i'm a radio and tv person i just started to work when i was thin so I'm over 20 years now on the major field. When I, I started my first uh, entre uh, company in Cameroon, my home country, in 2003. So um, it's a long time ago I'm self-employment, you know. At the end, and then I've said employment, I was going to school and then I was working as well in some company that do the consultation. That's why I set up, uh, in South Africa I did the same. That's why K did in South Africa, Cameroon here, and then in Burkina Faso as well. But when I arrived in Ireland, it was tough. It's difficult for you to be self-employment and to earn some money. You have to maybe to work. To go and work, you give your CV, they say, oh no, you have a lot of skill. Like, really? So for me, having a skill is a problem. But <laughs> another fact, having a skill is supposed to be a welcome. But they say, no, you have a lot of skill. You can't offer you this job. So, okay, well, you don't offer me this job, so what can I do? And the end of the day, you go to another door, they say you don't have any experience. I say, really, dear madam or dear uh, sir, if you don't give me an opportunity to have an experience, how am I going to get an experience in Ireland? I don't have any experience in Ireland, but I want to work. I want to have an experience. For me to have an experience, you have to offer me the job. No job, no experience. If I stay here for 10 years, if you don't give me an opportunity to be on the field, I'll have no experience. So you, I, 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 I went as, as well, I worked in the Cliff of Mohe. Uh, is a center of touristic, uh, um, a big center, a touristic uh, center in Ireland. 
at the end of the day, the, the manager come and say to me that I'm intimidated, the team leader. I say, how am I intimidated? This intimidation is a, is a huge word. How am I going to intimidate someone? It's me. I say to her strictly that if you, you have a courage to tell me that I'm intimidating people, it means that you are not the right person to be the manager. Because as a manager, you have to be on top. On top doesn't mean that you have to put the people down, but you have to know how to lead them, to talk to them. If you're intimidated, you are employee. It means that there's something wrong. And on that day, I, I understand myself that, Karen, you don't, you, it's long time you, you, you haven't worked for someone. It's better to focus on your own thing and do what you're supposed to do. It means that you have to continue to do what is best for you. Best for me is what? To share my idea with the others, lead my own company. I then I register my, my group here as well. And then I'm trying to do my best to continue with the blog and find, and find myself how am I going to push one or two women to follow my dream to do what we're supposed to do. But we don't care about the skill, actually. But we go and fetch the skill. Even though you don't have it, you can feel it. Once you feel it, follow your dream. So that's why I, 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 I do with a lot of ladies. I even bring them to do the crochet, to do the dancing, to do, there's a lot of things that I'm organizing. Do the earrings, I organize the festival, and from that we can earn some money. So this skill, we can create this skill every day. As she was, she mentioned, uh, Tolani mentioned something about the direct provision. It touched me because I realized that many of them, they, they, they are putting them down because of the skill. They are putting them down because, sorry, because of the skill. And they think that they are just a model. No, I say, once you are even sitting there, you can do the crochet, you can do the air, you can do a lot of things. You can go to the charity shop and bought something like uh, cheapest and come and redo it in your own way and then we present it in the world it's what we call the culture and festivity and people will come across and buy and give you an opportunity to set up their own thing can you imagine if you do a lot of rules crochet and so on and do your own small business you don't have to pay tax but you're earning your money you are proud of who you are you are not just a mother but you are created something so those skills yes and once you polish it you can go to, when you organize the event, you don't never know who is there to watch, to watch you. But one day, someone will come and say, oh, Karen or Mary, I saw you were doing this thing and small decoration. I have a name in my house. Can you come and do this for me? And what, what, what? It's this, it's this code. It's like, it starts for you. And then you get your own skills. You get your own experience. You get to use to the people. So for me, the skill, there is, place in Ireland that you can get it but it's still few and then it's not well known to the other so we have to find how especially the migrant women migrant is not only from Africa there's a migrant everywhere there's a lot of migrants in Ireland we can get them together and spread the word and let them know that yes you can go and never give up continue to follow open the door knock as soon as as much as possible one day you will find your own way yeah lovely and, and just to remind people, if they want to ask a question to either yourself, Karine, or to Tulumani, just to, to put it into the chat, uh, and um, I can ask, the, ask you then. But I found that interesting, um, Karine, what you're saying about that you're too ed educated or too skilled. And it's amazing that that was one of the findings in the survey, that the, the majority of the women that we surveyed were highly educated. And yet, even with all that education and skill, that it's almost seen as a disadvantage because you're not taken seriously or you're not fit for purpose for, for the particular job, etc. So it's amazing that, that the, you, you, if you're not skilled enough or if you're not educated enough or whether you're too educated or too skilled, there's just where, do you, where is that, um, uh, that, that um, happy medium in terms of, well, not the happy medium, but just how can you get people to take you on board and um, I, I thought that that was interesting. Um, and also what Tularani was saying that um, in terms of education, that it's not a, a one size fits all, but that the training should be um, uh, for ethnic minority women should be tailored for their needs and for their skill set. And I, I think that's something hopefully that you will see in the modules that we have developed um, out of the Imose uh, project. But um, finally, just I want to, um, I'm conscious of time and just need to, to finish this. And just in terms of maybe a, a parting um, a comment or advice that you could give women 
who um, are in, you know, from an ethnic minority, who are thinking of setting up an enterprise or social enterprise, etc. What advice um, could you offer them, uh, Karine? The advice is just to read a lot. We have the internet. Internet is not just to go to Facebook. From, and that's why I always say to people, go Google things. Feel, first of all, feel what you really want to do. Understand yourself. Ask the question, who I am? What, what, did I, what exactly I want to be tomorrow? You know, you face yourself. You have to be, to be a bit hard about yourself to discover who you are. Once you discover who you are, you ask your question, first of all, who I am? Where am I going? Where I want to, to go or when I want to be? What I want to be tomorrow? That's the time of question. When you answer those questions, you will define yourself. You have more self-confidence. I'd be, never be afraid to ask questions to the people. Never be afraid to knock the doors. Once you know that this door, that's really exactly what I want, go and knock it. Even though you have the an objection, never give up. Continue or ask people. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. No. Most you have objection, more you will define yourself if you never give up. But if you give up at this minute, because the failure is to never try. Once you can keep trying, you will finally find your own way. Keep trying, follow your dreams, define who you are. Don't listen to 10,000 people. Listen to yourself first. Want to set up what you want, even though it's small. There's no small business. There's no small thing that you can do. It's we we are putting things small. If you want your own thing to be big, it'll be big. Just dream. Today, I don't know how I did it. The K did is international, but I don't know how I did it. I started like, I want to do this. That's exactly what I want to do. Once I start to write my version of the fact, to heal from my own pain, I say, I have to give an opportunity to the other people to heal as well. And the best thing is to create something like an, an association or something where I can put all those people together and heal. That's how I set up Kate Aid. I set up Kate Aid, I say, oh, my home country, South Africa, I was there as well. Let me do this step. Once I go to many conferences, I say, I saw people, they say, oh, we are suffering. You, you are such a role model for me. Can we do this here? I say, yeah, why not? I just jumped there. Say, let me do this. When I arrive in Ireland, I say, I can. The first week that I arrived in Ireland, I know Akidwa. I know Ruhama. I was calling them. I go and Google all this, every single thing, and then I ring them. Oh, how are you? My name is Wada. Can I meet you to have a chat or leave the coffee because I want to talk? That's how I start. There were people that I called them several times and haven't accepted to meet me. There are people like Anne, she doesn't know me, I just go on Facebook, I say, hey, hello Anne, my name is Karen, can I see you? And then I want to have an appointment with you. She said, oh, lovely. And then I went, jumped to Waterford, I had it, it was my first time to go to Waterford. <laughs> oh, exactly, thank you again, Anne, and hello. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you call people several times, they won't give you opportunity. There are some people that will call them and the minute they will give you an opportunity, you don't have to follow. That's interesting. That's how I met you, Mary. Because it's <laughs> so, but it's, that's, that's so interesting. Exactly. It's exactly what, what you're saying there is exactly what is coming out in the surveys, the importance of networking and collaboration. And it was such a strong um, um, skill or a set that was required that in the survey that we actually developed a module around that in itself, around the skill of networking and collaboration because it is so important, because otherwise you're isolated, you're on your own, and as you say, who do you talk to? But you have to get, you know, you have to see, win the organizations, win the people, ask for the cup of coffee, and, and do the chat, and that's exactly how you, you, you find people and how you support each other. And I think, Tulumani, that's what Virginity Africa is all about as well, isn't it? That um, collegiality amongst each other, you know, that you're supporting, one another. And then one thing as well is that don't take the, the, it's true that language can be a barrier, but keep trying. Even with the sign language, you can understand each other. I keep trying, try to say anything. If it, English is not my first language, my first language is French, but I'm keeping trying. Most you try, most you practice, you finally get there. And people understand exactly what you really want. And they can even manage you to even listen, to even learn this language that you want. 
what is will help you to achieve your goals. But you have to go first, knock and never give up, women. We are the power of the world. We have to do this. <laughs> Fantastic advice, Sarah Green. Thank you so much. And to Luani, just to finish, do you have, uh, would you have um, advice as well? Yeah. Just want to say, Karin, you're such an inspiration. Uh, I mean, you're a French speaker. It, there is no hold barred when you're speaking. So <laughs> you don't, you. that is really inspirational. So well done. Uh, just to add to what Karina said, then I'm sure, I, I'm sure Marie, you, you laughed a lot when you were doing these interviews with us because, I, you know, you had all these crazy women around you <laughs> doing their thing. So well done again, Marie. So, um, yeah, just following on from what Marie, uh, what um, Karine says is um, that that need for continuous professional development mm -hmm. for every one of us as entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, we, we need to continue to learn and unlearn, relearn. You know, um, I discovered that one of the challenges uh, for us um, ethnic minorities when we're starting our businesses is uh, financial management, financial education. And so, um, it's important to to invest um, as much as possible in in, the, in in developing those skills and competencies that allow you to um, give the very best in terms of value to the organisation. Uh, so definitely, the CPDs are important, whether accredited or not accredited. LinkedIn has um, a, a powerful um, range of um, courses for businesses. Actually, we had a session Hegemony Africa with with LinkedIn and they actually offered us a, a membership in some of their business courses which has really really proven to really be good so i'm not advertising for them but i just found them really good <laughs> okay so uh, also it's look for the for mentors now uh, mentors i'm using that word loosely because you have to find the right mentors for you okay so it's important to look for the right mentor not every mentor is the right mentor for you so you have to you know, determine what your goals are and find the mentor, the kind of mentor that you need that will support you uh, in your journey. Uh, so you need those, those kind of mentors, especially when they're from people that have lived experiences um, and, and so they can um, rightly direct you in the right, um, in the, in the, in the right area that you want to go. Um, also, one of the key things for me with, with failing I dare to, so it doesn't define me. I think that it's okay to fail. It's what you do with the failure that is important. So it's, it's, it's daring to, to, to fail and to embrace all that, all the learning that comes with that. And, and I found that that's really advantageous for me. And of course, you have mentioned networking. Uh, we, we, we collaborate, we, 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 um, we encourage networking and collaboration across cultures and, and across um, regions. So it allows us to tap into the, the wealth of experiences and the, the resources that are there uh, in different parts of, of the world. Uh, and so that that really works. And we do two Saturdays in 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 two Saturdays in the month. We do entrepreneurs coffee and connect. Well, I say you must bring your cup of coffee into this virtual space and uh, and come and connect with other entrepreneurs. And then after the chat, I kind of leave the room open for like thirty minutes. I step away, do your thing. You know, that's that's your networking space, exchange ideas or whatever. So that is also also important. But I, I think also. Where, where, where the failing is for us and a skill we have to develop is being able to cross-culturally interact and build networks with the indigenous because only on the ethnic communities for our businesses and that's setting ourselves up for failure because we don't have enough in terms of so we also need to build solid networks across the other uh, other side and, and and i suppose that's that's where the integration is where it's on, on both sides and bringing everything together so you are joining those networks that are not just centered on your own ethnic minorities or ethnic minorities around you but the indigenous community who have the population and also have the skill set that allow you to learn so that you know how to interact with irish businesses because there is the cultural dimension to it 
I mean, it, when we talk, I'm a Nigerian, a native Nigerian, when we talk, uh, you say, and we get really animated, you say, oh, they're aggressive people, you know? <laughs> and so I have mastered the act of being forthright with a smile, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, say what I need to say, but I, I, you know, I, I do what I need to do as the Irish would understand the dimension. I didn't realize that when you type in, when you type, oh, we've lost you there, to the money. Yeah, we, we, we why lost. bother to, to change it? It wasn't until I got here. We lost it wasn't until people. I got here that I realized. Sorry? We lost you there for a few minutes, Tulamani. Sorry, that I didn't get you there, Marie. Oh, we lost you there for a few minutes. Go we here. Yeah. I said it wasn't until I got into Ireland that I realized that when you type with capital letters, it's shouting. Oh. I thought that when I start with capital letter, I can't be bothered to go back again. So the, cost, the cultural dimensions to it is very important for us to learn as well. So it's the mingling, the interactions with Irish businesses allow us to be able to also push our skills and competencies to say, look, this is where I am. This is me, this is what I can do, you know, and all of that. So that allows us to. Oh, I think you're, I, you're uh, yeah. Is about learning to represent ourselves very well, consistently. So, you know, so your digital, your digital um, reputation, your digital tattoo and all of that is, a, is, is consistently what you want it to be, you know. Um, so, because a lot of people okay. now, they go online and they search to Luan. I was trying to get a, 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 a Oh, Tulawani, I think we're, we're after losing you. The reception is gone, but it, it's actually kind of timely because oh, we really need to finish up the, the application. application. Oh, sorry, Tulawani, the, the reception is oh, very bad. All right. So sorry about that. But we actually have to wrap this section up, actually, because I know Corrine has to, to leave us. So just before Kareen leaves, I just want to thank uh, both Kareen and Tulawani for taking part um, today. And I think everyone can agree that they, they really bring such energy and motivation and uh, determination. Every time I talk to them, I just come away so energized. It's unreal. And um, but they're, they're such fantastic examples of uh, women that are empowered, but also that are reaching out um, to other women to help as well. And I think that uh, is, is the work you're both doing is just fantastic and putting the rest of us to shame all together. But thank you so much for all the work that you do. And um, just some comments there. I, I noticed that Anne Nolan was saying that we recognize the huge potential for social enterprise for women as a methodology for empowerment and supporting financial independence. And I think, yes, um, I, and that was one of the findings that we found in the survey as well that social enterprises offer this huge opportunity, not only for the, the, the mm -hmm. importance of the woman, but also the impact the woman then has on the, her local area and region as a result of the social enterprise that uh, she has established. So definitely the social enterprises are such huge opportunities. And um, so again, just a lot of comments coming in. Congratulations, Ian, saying how wonderful you are. And- um, Thank you very much. Nula was saying that she works with travel women and there was so much shared experience in terms of discrimination and challenges and lots of learning this morning from Corinne and Tulawani. So thank you very much. And um, Paul is thanking me as well. So, um, and Maureen is saying that in SA, we understand the NGO provides charity services. As a result, we depended on funding to sustain their social enterprise. Love it. Okay. Lovely. Thank you, Maureen. Listen, I want, I just want to say, cause I'm conscious Kareen has literally to one on us. <laughs> and I wanted to say that Maureen is working with Katie as well in South Africa. So Maureen. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Okay. Lovely. Thank you, Maureen, for joining us today. Brilliant. Um, so I have your details on slides as well. So if anybody wants to find out more about your organizations, um, they, uh, they're on the Mosey website. 
and your videos are on the Remosi website as well as description of your enterprises. So I would definitely encourage everyone to look up um, um, your organizations. So thank you very much, Corrine, and thank you very much, Tulavani. And apologies, Tulavani, there at the end, the reception just went. So thank you. Um, so I'll just move on. Thank you then. very much, Anne. Um, thank you for all the, the yeah. comments as well. So I'll just move on then to the, the next part of our um, um, of our um, uh, event today. So that's Corrine's website, cadaid.org, uh, and Tulwani is her Genuity Africa. And as I say, these are on the website, the Mosey website as well. And Betty, who was meant to be joining us today, uh, but unfortunately couldn't because she has an illness, um, she is uh, bi um, fighting infectious diseases in the Gambia. So her website is there as well. And again, her video is up on uh, display. And just to let you know that there's lots of stories from around um, uh, Europe, the, the seven partner, um, partner countries involved. So um, the, you can see there's a selection there. When you go onto the website, you will be able to see um, the um, I'll just go onto the website here and just to, to show you that the, so the mose.eu and if you go into outcomes and you will see then that there's two sections. You need to share your browser. Your oh, eyes. okay. Right, I'll, I'll just. So just, yeah. Yeah. Sorry now, I'll go onto that again. And if it doesn't work this time, I have it on um, on the PowerPoint anyway. No. Okay, I'll just go back to the PowerPoint just to, to, to finish this off. Um, so on the website, you will come, there's two, um, two sections, one for the videos and then also one for- it's Still on the browser. Oh, yeah. am I? Sorry, okay, apologies. Start again. Now, is that better? No. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and as you can see, there's lots of videos, um, usually about four minutes in, in length, um, the, the videos, and um, from across the um, Turkey, Greece, Italy, uh, the UK, and Lithuania, and ourselves. And just to let you know that there, there were five women um, in total from Ireland. And um, so the other two women um, that, that hopefully we will speak to in February, when we run a similar event in February, um, is Justina, who is um, founder of the Polish Arts Festival, which is based uh, here in Limerick. And um, also Carol York, um, who is pushing in the magic uh, pony sanctuary down in, in Washford. And um, again, fabulous women to talk to, so energetic and so passionate about the work that they do. And I don't know if you can make it up, but there's a little head of a pony at the back of Carl there. So she even brings the ponies inside. It's fantastic. So wonderful, um, fabulous interviews to, to have. And that uh, resource is there uh, for us. So um, out of the interviews and out of the surveys then, we developed a suite of modules. So these modules offer both theoretical information, but also useful links to digital tools and video links. So for example, um, TED Talks or um, little, uh, websites, etc., that it will be of relevance to the topic. And then at the end of each module, you will find a short quiz um, to check the, the, module, the, the, the knowledge in the module and also practical exercises. And these allow you to practice uh, the theoretical part of the modules. So I'll show you an example of those. But just firstly, to outline um, the, the learning resources that we developed. So there's seven modules altogether. So the first module is an introduction to social enterprise. So again, it's going through the basics of what is the social enterprise? What are the main objectives of a social enterprise? Uh, what are some of the challenges involved, and then also some of the, the impacts, both uh, on an individual and also local uh, community impact and uh, national impact. Then um, 
out of the findings of the survey, um, business skills was identified as an area that to develop. So we have um, look, uh, looked at starting your own business. So going through the basics of you know, developing a business plan, um, what are some of the legal forms of the different, the various legal forms of a social enterprise, and what are some of the skills involved in starting a business. Um, I, another one then, marketing and communication. And I think Tulawani mentioned it there uh, towards the end about IT and uh, the importance of IT. And this is especially um, when you think of marketing and communication, uh, especially social media. So how to develop your online marketing plan and how various ways, not just online, but other various ways to promote your social enterprise. But again, there is that concentration on the, uh, uh, the IT. And then um, uh, again, the running your own business, the various skills in actually running a business. So the skills, um, you know, the research and development skills, et cetera, of running the business, the day-to-day -day finance, um, um, et cetera. And there's a number of case studies involved in looking at that, um, that skill set. Um, funding then, and again, this came out um, in the survey for the, those women who are founders of uh, social enterprises, that financing a social enterprise is one of the main challenges that they uh, face. So this module goes through the various ways of financing your social enterprise, the formal agencies, et cetera, and also things, you know, crowdfunding, et cetera, all the different uh, types of funding um, available. Uh, networking, and again, we've talked, to, this has been mentioned a few times today. I think both Corinne and Tulawani mentioned it as well, uh, the importance of networking and um, how it, important it is um, in terms of accessing um, a job in the first place, which is one of the findings of the survey, but also in um, overcoming some of the cultural barriers that, that are in place. So this um, module is looking at how to expand and exploit your network and how to um, become part of a formal and informal networks and collaboration. And then the final one is on sustainability. And again, this is important because um, social enterprises need to be sustainable. They need to be able to move in uh, to the future, pro pro progress. And um, often people think of social enterprise, in social enterprise that it's almost a bad thing to mention profit or money and um, making a profit. But that's what is needed in order to be able to sustain your social enterprise and to keep the social aspects of the social enterprise uh, going as well. So this module is looking at the role of innovation for achieving sustainable social enterprises. And again, looking at the impact of technology that um, Tulawani mentioned as well. So the modules were developed um, on the basis of the responses of the survey, and um, both from the women and also from the agencies um, who work with them. And the survey results revealed which skills and the development is essential for women. And so therefore we were connecting um, so, for example, communication skills was one of the top skills that um, came through in the survey. So this is, it can be seen in module two and module three. Um, creativity and innovation, again, this is module two, module four, module five, etc. So it's just to, to show you how we're connecting the modules to the skills that came through in the survey itself. So now um, I think we're going to look at um, the Moodle um, page. So uh, Seamus, I don't know if you, do you want to go through the, the Moodle page or will I? I might go through it and see. Can I share? I'll try sharing the Moodle page and see. I'll do that, Marie. It's okay. We'll it. Okay, grand. So the Moodle page is just a platform, an e-learning platform where these modules will be held. And it's under construction at the moment, but um, it's very near completion. So um, you'll be oh. able to access it. Yeah. So maybe just before I go in there, uh, just to reiterate that uh, all of the resources will be available on the MWASI website. So it's mwasi.eu. Um, so obviously the homepage will give you the, the background 
and then all of the the core results are here that Maria has been talking about um, the state of the art report so the literature review is available for download the storytelling library so um, when you go in here you'll see the list of uh, stories that came from across the, the partner countries you can click into any one of those and you'll see a brief overview of um, that particular social enterprise and that um, particular woman involved in social enterprise and uh, the transcript from the video and it's if you're looking for keywords there's a section there on keywords that you can look for then as well and there's also a link to their particular video at the end of the transcript as well and then obviously all of the videos are available uh, on the Amazi YouTube channel, um, which we encourage you to, to access and share. And um, you will be able to find the, the videos there. So the, the learning resources, at, um, the, the current connection from the, the website to the, the, the learning platform, um, just as a minor technical problem that we're uh, hoping to fix in the next day or two. Um, but I'm going to take you into the, the learning portal anyway. So it's, it's hosted on a platform called Moodle. Um, we've designed it to be very easy and flexible for use, very clean, um, so not very complex. So all the modules are simply available. Um, the modules that the that um, Marie outlined are, are all there. The, the core structure, if I'm going to focus just on the networking one, just for information, you'll have a, a kind of a, a lecture, which will be a set of um, PowerPoint slides defining the project and then the, the various aspects uh, that are covered. And then you can, you know, very easily, it's designed to be short bite-sized pieces of content that reflect back on the gaps and the areas that uh, were identified in the survey and the skills needs, but also embedded throughout the content are lots of different uh, additional resources, links and materials, not just from Ireland, but from across Europe um, that people have found. And then, um, lots of case studies and other information and you'll see actually Tulawane was the case study in, uh, in this particular um, module links to uh, TED Talks which might be relevant and then lots of different references and additional material uh, that would support um, people who want to do more reading and backed up by also um, additional kind of academic or published papers. Um, so people can go d as deep as they want or take a light look through the content. Um, we also, in each of the modules, have a range of uh, practical exercises. So these are designed for um, either for the women themselves or for people who might be uh, trainers or mentors involved in social enterprise or in working with women from ethnic minorities. So these are sorry, a range of kind of exercises that uh, people can engage with. I'm just going to share that screen now. And just each uh, module is around 30 slides. So it's not, we didn't want it to overwhelming either. So it's um, each one is about the, the 30 slides. And then these are just uh, practical exercises that um, you uh, can do yourself or if you are a trainer um, or educator that you can work around and adapt maybe to your needs as well so, so it's very much something that's flexible as well again we, we won't go through these but this is just a typical example of kind of the think pair share activity where if you had a, a group of women were considering about their, their particular skills or strengths um, so uh, working together uh, in small groups, you know, what, what are their particular skills, what are their strengths, what are their skills or strengths of their organization if they're relevant. Um, and then in pairs, um, exchanging that information 
Um, do you have similar skills? What uh, skills could you share? What do you think are gaps? And then you feed that back out into the wider group. Um, so again, designed to be simple and effective and not very complex so that um, the, the point of entry is as easy as possible for people to come and use the resources uh, that have been developed. And I'm just going to go back then to the Moodle page. And again, for the activities, each module would have about four to five activities uh, that can be adapted uh, for use. And then we are back here. And then, yeah, I think James is going to put the, the final one then is the quiz. So the quiz then is to test the theory from the, the PowerPoint presentation, etc. And again, the, um, if the, an incorrect answer is given, the, the correct answer will be uh, provided at the end. Yeah, so at the end you have uh, the, the quiz. So again, people can enter here. And this here is a series of short questions um, that people can just quickly answer again. Simple, just really self-testing for um, for themselves. Again, I'm just quickly doing these. Oh, probably not giving the right answer. So between five and seven questions, um, and then you submit and finish. And then they will, uh, as Marie said, give you. So I'm obviously not a very good student of social enterprise. Um, but they'll give you the correct answer and some guidance. So again, these are self-checks towards the end of the, the, the content. So designed to be um, easy to use, easy to access. So what will happen is that you'll be able to go to the Amazing website, do a very simple registration process, and then you'll be able to access the content and use it obviously free of charge. Um, and all the resources have been um, you know, we're making them available kind of as uh, under the Creative Commons license so people again can use them uh, for themselves to support their, their own personal development or enterprise development if, if that's relevant for them. Well, I think that's everything we need to show. It's very simple, very clean um, and this will also be available in the languages of the, the partner um, countries in the project. I think that's it on that, Marie, if you want to. Okay. So well, I'll go back to sharing the, the PowerPoint um, then. So hopefully you'll be able to see that. And um, we can skip through these. I just put the um, screenshots of different things uh, in the modules because knowing my experience with technology, it can fail. <laughs> so I just cover myself. There are the partners that are involved from the various countries. And um, so um, Italy, um, Greece, uh, Lithuania, the UK, uh, Turkey and ourselves here in Ireland and just want to say thank you for, for listening to us and for engaging with us today. Um, I also would like to thank uh, Kate, our IT uh, person here to, for helping me with this project and Yvonne as well for helping to promote this uh, project as well. So thank you very much. Um, so if there are any questions or comments, if you'd like to raise a hand or put it in the, the the chat and uh, please do and we can have a discussion around that and in the meantime um, we can provide information on other social enterprise projects that uh, we are involved in um, so our, the one of the main projects we're working on at the moment in the social enterprise area is social bee and uh, social bee is looking at um, the education and training of social enterprise across Europe so it's looking to enhance the sustainability and employability within the social uh, enterprise sector uh, by empowering an existing but also future social enterprises with skills and um, by promoting um, and imparting entrepreneurial uh, skills, etc. And it's directed towards HGI, the higher education institutes and uh, vocational education um, institutes, uh, the look geared towards them and uh, by um, so that it would be something that they can enhance the, 
their existing knowledge base and learning um, uh, already. So it's looking at exploring and addressing the skills gap and the training gaps um, in the current education uh, programs um, by establishing a framework to develop the competencies of students, social entrepreneurs and social enterprise practitioners through effective pedagogies um, for active learning targeted at social practice and um, social enterprise practitioners. So at the moment we have the first part done, which was a survey of social enterprises and um, also of higher education institutes and BETs um, across the, the four um, across the partners. The, it's consisted of eight partners from four countries, ourselves and Ballyhara in Ireland, Italy, Greece and Slovenia. So at the end, we hope to deliver um, a suite of skills training and that will be a comprehensive assessment of the skills gap and training needs in key areas and we're focusing in especially on development, sustainability and expansion of the social enterprise sector. So we're very much focusing on courses in Europe that to look at the development and sustainability aspects of social enterprise. So out of this, we will be designing um, and uh, which is the phase we're moving into next uh, between 16 and 24 learning units. And that can be used um, by existing um, people in social enterprises, but also maybe for undergrads who are coming in and don't know anything about social enterprises. So it will address all levels, those who have very limited knowledge of social enterprises, and then those obviously who have the practical experience of social enterprise. So um, the, the learning units will be adapted to fit all uh, those needs. So, um, the learning units will form the, the main content of the social B e-learning repository. So again, something similar to the Imrosi and um, Moodle that we have. And so offer the education resources and it will be for, again, for individual training, but also maybe for educators who want to adapt these um, learning modules, learning units for use in their own classroom. So that's what we're working on at the moment in terms of um, social enterprise. So I'm just checking to see are there any um, uh, questions there in the chat. Um, okay, so Paul was saying that he was wondering before, uh, the, was it a great idea to have it flexible for people to do themselves online or deliver to a group of people? Yes, so that's what we, um, we aimed for so that women themselves can come in and because um, they might already have a, a background knowledge on what is a social enterprise. So, but maybe they feel the need for developing their networking skills so they can uh, concentrate on the networking module rather than what is a social enterprise module. So it's flexible for the educators as well that, that they will be able to uh, dip in and out of it and see what is suitable for their class and, and for their, um, uh, their course. And as I say, they're designed for approximately 40 minutes to an hour length of a, of a classroom situation as well. But again, it provides lots of um, uh, learning sources that can be accessed outside of the classroom then as well. So um, hopefully it provides um, information that will, that will be um, accessible to all. So I don't see any other questions as, as such. Um, so Seamus, I might leave it to you then to, to conclude. Oh, Paul, you do have a quick question, do you? Hi. Um, yeah. uh, thanks everyone, it was a great presentation. It's lovely to hear everyone's stories and the project looks great. Um, I, I'm based in Galway and would have worked in community education and social or sustainable enterprise um, for 10 years now. We weren't calling it that at the beginning, but um, I was just curious if, um, if you've looked at um, maybe because like we work with the UTV here and we can get funding through the UTV for like LTIs, like local training initiatives, if it's a QQI qualified course and you can fit kind of variable skills into general learning at a level four level or something like that. Had you looked at kind of like over the possibility of overlaying um, the course with uh, a QQI accreditation just so that you can, like that, so there could be funding tapped into to deliver these courses. 
um, because they look great to deliver, but just the resources to deliver them will be a question. Yeah, it's a, a great question, Paul, and a good comment. Um, in it's an area that we're exploring, I suppose, broadly in in our uh, the development unit here. One of the focuses for the next year is to, particularly in social enterprise, is to try and establish. Um, what we're calling it at the moment kind of an, an academy and that would ultimately drive at uh, a couple of things trying to embed social enterprise in our existing undergraduate programs and create new shorter higher education level certificate programs but also then not just the Amazigh content we have other content from previous projects um, which is currently sitting on the World Wide Web that we've developed. It's been used, but hasn't been accredited. And it is ideal for level four, level five, level six type content. Um, what we need to do is sit down and work with the likes of the ETBs to do that. Obviously, LIT is level six and upwards, higher education world. Um, but what we don't want to happen is the all the work that Marie and all of the teams across Europe have done just sits on a, a website somewhere that's and is used by the people at the time in that moment. Um, so yeah, it's it's one of the, the areas is that we want to explore is to try and see how we can do that. And ultimately, you know, we're not level four, level five experts. We'd be happy to work with somebody, and give them give them the content because that's Erasmus strategic partnerships are open access content. Um, we'd be happy. We'd be delighted to see somebody taking this and uh, potentially developing it into an LTI type initiative. Thanks. Lovely, thanks Paul. Are there any other questions or comments that people want to maybe even, if they want to even unmute and talk now or put in the chat? No, okay. Everybody needs, everybody needs coffee. Um, <laughs> so listen, just to say thanks very much, everybody, for taking the time this morning. Um, I know people are busy and people living in online meetings all, all these days. I certainly am. Um, uh, special thanks to Marie, who's done a huge amount of work over the last couple of two years on the project and for getting it to this stage. Um, and as Marie mentioned, to, to Kate and Yvonne, who've uh, supported organizing both the Moodle site and Yvonne and organizing today. So we have planned another event in the new year. Um, we're hoping that maybe we might be able to do a physical event, but let's see. Um, but there, there will be a follow-up event. So if there's anybody you think might be interested, uh, please let them know. We will be circulating uh, a follow-up email with links to the resources and um, giving you uh, the details of how you can reg register and access uh, all the learning resources as well in, in due course. So um, just keep an eye out for that. Um, so, and obviously uh, if, you know, if you want to keep an eye on the, the work that LIT team is doing. Uh, we're we're on LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, you'll, you'll find us there, or else just go to the LIT website. You'll see all the resources there. We're trying to constantly keep that updated and keep you informed. Um, so thanks very much, and keep safe, everybody, and uh, happy Christmas. Thanks again, everyone, and to to Lorania and Karina, and thank you everyone for engaging with us today. So, and again, happy, can you imagine we're saying happy Christmas already? <laughs> Thank you. Much Merry Christmas.